It's took me ages to get to this point. Before this, I put lots of barriers and hurdles in the way and things that maybe just made me think I wasn't worthy of creating a channel. The people really want to watch the content that I can produce. I don't even know if I'm good enough to do this. I don't even have the right kind of equipment. I need another camera to film. All these doubts that I had in my head. Well anyway, all them things um, were holding me back from being creative and telling my story or uh, explaining the world or the behind the scenes of the photography that I do. Well, I'm pleased to say I'm starting today. This is my photography YouTube channel and my name's Justin Garner. So the channel's going to be looking at different areas of photography from studio work to documenting natural history. So I'm going to be doing that by uh, telling stories uh, of things that I see in the small world and maybe some birds and things like that but also some of the ways that I capture images and kind of the behind the scenes of setups and some of the gear that I use as well. So I hope all this will be interesting for viewers uh, and yeah this is going to be a time for me to explain the things that I do on a weekly basis. So I'm really pleased about something that um, I've achieved. Um, a couple of years back I lived in Manchester and um, I used to do my macro photography uh, in some wasteland that wasn't very far away from where I lived. And now unfortunately this wasteland or this area of public space um, is now being um, has been bought and is going to have houses built on it uh, but the abundance of wildlife in this tiny space was great and um, so there's lots of butterflies and lots of moths uh, and other things that were there there were foxes there as well unfortunately once that land goes all the moths and butterflies won't get rehoused anywhere else they'll be lost really so it's really sad that uh, biodiversity in that area um, isn't taken account for when it comes down to um, new builds or when it comes down to things like that. So what I had, had the idea was to harvest some of the seeds that were there. So on the, it was not last year, but the year before, I went around collecting the seed heads from ragwort in the, with the idea of trying to attract a certain moth, which is called the cinnabar moth. Now where I was moving to, which is on the edge of the Peak District, there was some wasteland at the bottom of my garden, uh, which didn't have any ragwort in it at the time. So what I did was I got the seeds which I'd collected and I'd sowed them last year, dug, dug an area of uh, the soil over and sowed some of this ragwort down. Now to my left, just over here, I've got a bunch of ragwort that are growing and there's no other ragwort in this area of this wasteland. Uh, and it's absolutely brilliant that I have attracted uh, the cinnabar moth. I have got cinnabar um, caterpillars all over this plant at the moment, which I was absolutely thrilled about when I found out or came and seen. So it just shows you that if you give nature a bit of room, it will thrive. It just needs a little bit of room for, um, for things to do well, really. So... A little bit about the moth, so the cinnabar moth chooses ragwort because ragwort is a poisonous plant, uh, it gets a bad name because uh, uh, they say it's poisonous to horses, so you, see, you see it in horse fields growing on its own and they say you should cut it down because the horses will get poisoned. Um, but, but when you actually look at it, it is a really good plant and insects make use of it. So the cinnabar moth lays its eggs on the plant so that its uh, larvae or caterpillars feed on it and then they become toxic with the toxins in the plant and then it makes them uh, not want to be eaten by birds and maybe other things that might feed upon caterpillars. So I think that's a, a brilliant strategy for them. Um, 
So the, the colour of the Cinnabar caterpillars are great. They've got this black and orange uh, lines on them, almost looking like sweets. Uh, so I don't really want to point them out to my little son who's, who might be attracted to them as well. Um, but the, the Cinnabar moth, it actually gets its name um, from the Cinnabar rock. So there's a rock or a mineral that's red uh, and it gets its name from there. Uh, so Cinnabar moths are day moths that fly around very attractive moth and you see kind of a, a, a black and red flutter when you see them flying by. I've got them at the bottom of my garden which I think is brilliant and um, yeah really pleased that I can do something like this and also that gives me the opportunity to document it as I'm doing now and maybe get some great shots of them uh, if that's possible but you have to create these chances and have to create habitats or find habitats um, so that you can do this. I don't live in a big massive span, like big area or anything like that. I've just created a tiny pocket and let nature thrive and this is what's happened. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in seeing this, some more of my work, look at my Instagram account. Uh, and if you want to see more of these videos, then uh, subscribe. Um, if you enjoyed this as well, uh, give me a like or give me a thumbs up, that'd be great. So until next time, uh, keep safe and I'll see you all again. Bye.